today's video is more focused for the um, individual that's doing DTF printing that has a printer and kind of going through a workflow as to how they process uh, an order that comes in. So I'm going to go through soup to nuts, beginning to end, you know, when I receive an order in uh, Shopify. And um, what I do to grab that information from Shopify, from the order screens, uh, download that to my system, and then uh, go through the tools that I use to get the file ready. Um, probably not going through extensively uh, the actual applications that I use to rip the files to make them printable because uh, unfortunately I do not have the broadcast tools on that machine uh, to kind of do what I'm doing here so you won't be able to see that anyways so but this will kind of get the, the start of it going and then uh, we'll re record uh, video um, on the actual print process uh, taking it into the printer printing it out uh, running it through the uh, powder shaker and uh, carrying it in the oven and then uh, getting it ready for delivery. So um, my screen right now, we're on the order screen. So a lot of it's um, blurred out uh, just for privacy information for the clients. Uh, but this order here uh, is one we're gonna process. So when I go into uh, the order, um, I use Shopify. So Shopify, allows me to see that they've used my gang sheet builder to build um, the order you know their size that they need so their order they've ordered uh, 22 by 108 so it's 22 inches wide by 108 inches long um, 72 bucks um, I can preview it here by clicking the link or edit the gang sheet if I needed to from here but Realistically, I don't want to use either one of these links. I want to download this file to my computer so I can get it ready to be processed and printed. So uh, that process is fairly straightforward. So I go into the app that controls that, which is Build a Gang Sheet. Uh, once I'm on Build a Gang Sheet, I can go to Orders and then choose. This is the order that came in. Um, from that client so I can click download what it does is it loads the graphic on your web browser so realistically you could right click this right now and say save image as and that's going to save that image to your disk it's going to be the right size the proper resolution so on and so forth but I typically don't do that my method is I'll right click the file or the link and say save link as and then I'll choose if I go into our locations here client jobs go into the client folder I've already saved it uh, previously but I'm going to go ahead and save it again click save do I want to replace it and click yes so that saves that file that that client built using our gang sheet builder um, they built their file online, put everything they wanted into it, they placed their order. So now I've downloaded the file, so now what I need to do is um, rip that file in my software uh, to make it printable, to put the under base on it and um, do any necessary steps to make it uh, printable. So that's going to be the next step. Um, you're not going to see those steps because, again, I don't have software on my print computer to uh, record those steps or processes so the next part of this video you're actually going to see me just uh, sending the file into my print application and printing it uh, as it is so that'll be the next step so once I receive a file from a client uh, and I have it in their folder uh, the first thing I do is I, I take it into Photoshop so I'm going to open this with uh, Photoshop 2023. <clears throat> Once I'm inside the graphic, I select it and then I do a quick mask on it. And for me, this is just 
You can see on my screen up there. I'm going to zoom in and make sure we don't have a bunch of dead or transparent pixels around the edge of the image. And that's typically what we see when someone tries to, you know, clear out a background or, you know, has a bad or, you know, not a very good quality image. So this image looks good. I can zoom in on it and see that we don't have any dead pixels here. So um, that would be fine. So when I zoom in, if there's dead or transparent pixels on the image, what will happen is they will print. Your eye doesn't see it because they're ghosted. They're transparent pixels. Your eye doesn't see it. My printer does. And my printer will print um, a white underbase underneath those pixels. So it might have a white outline around the image because of the way that you've removed your background. So this image is good. Uh, so at this point, I just get out of Photoshop, don't save any changes to the app file itself and then I go into my production manager software and I'm going to go ahead and load um, that file so if I browse to client jobs personal and I'm going to mask this so you don't see it and that's your file there so I'm going to click add Once it's added, you're probably not seeing much of this because it's up on the screen up there. Um, once it's added to the system, I'm going to open it up, uh, verify the uh, layout is correct. All my settings should be fine. The last thing I have to do is here, I have to change my under base to solid under. And then I just click send. So and then it asks where I'm going to send it to. So um, I've created a folder structure on my desktop. I have a PRT files. I've got this year, this month, and then today's date is the 19th. So I'm going to put this file here in this directory. It's going to get ready to rip. I guess I can come up here while it does it. screen cursor is not always promising okay so ripping is happening right now on the file and normally this is relatively fast within three to five minutes we'll rip the file and then it'll print it to a prt file um, that goes in that directory that we specified and then we'll grab we'll use this utility here which is our print program, and we'll grab that file and print it from there. So we're ripping it right now. Once it's ready to go, we're going to send it through this little beast over here. So I'll normally do a nozzle check, get that printed out, and get a little bit of a leader onto my tray here. And then once I have my leader, um, I'll go ahead and get it going. Printing, ripping, I should say, not printing, but ripping. All right. Again, this is, you can see the size of the file right here is a 22 inch and is 108 inches in length. So that's the size of the file that we're going to be printing here. So once this process is completed. So at this point, the uh, process is done. You can see the uh, status here just states done. Shows it's a 22 by 108. Shows the size. Shows the ICC profile that I've used. So the next step here is we then open it up in printxp to get it to start printing. So come over here. I apologize because I'm doing this all by holding my camera while I'm trying to run it. So, um, so if I go inside of printxp, which is our print application, I'll go to file and I'll refresh the screen so it's under Nathan and then under my desktop, we've got a, a PRT files, the year, the month, today's date, and then you can see the order is right there, 1026.
and I'm going to mask or blur the uh, information below for, just for privacy reasons. So when I double click the image, it brings up what they're wanting printed, it shows me the job DPI, uh, job size, uh, and then from here when I click print, um, my printer over there is going get, to get busy. So before I do that though, I haven't printed in a little bit uh, today, so I'm going to click clean. Uh, I'm going to do two head all clean, I'm going to do a strong clean. That's going to clean the print heads. I come over to the printer and see what it's doing. It says it's cleaning the head. There's the print heads there. This is your white, and then the back is the uh, color head, the CMYK. So it's going to clean the head. It's going to wipe off any excessive, uh, excessive ink using that squeegee. station because so I did a strong clean it's actually going to take a little bit longer it still says that it's cleaning and then once it's done I'll do a nozzle check and then uh, from there I'll do my print all right so that's the next portion of the clean so now we're back at idle so the printer's not ready, so at this point I print uh, a nozzle check. Depending on how long your printer's been sitting, you may need to do more than one uh, cleaning to clean the head, because ink will build up or it'll start to dry up and potentially clog your printer if you have to run these cleans uh, to get it cleaned up. So this just ran a nozzle check. I'm going to hit the down button on my printer here, bring it down. I'm going to use one hand to do this, but uh, so now that I have this down a little bit, I can kind of look at the inks there on the nozzle check and I can see everything looks relatively good. You know, there's no broken lines and there's a little bit here on this one here, but I'm not too concerned about that. As soon as I start printing, It'll probably push and clean that out, but all my inks um, on this nozzle chip look really good. So what I do at this point is I go ahead and bring the, the film down by pressing down until it's relatively that noz nozzle check is on the, the intake tray to the shaker. Because um, I need a little bit of a feeder to get it going to get my powder loop uh, established inside of the, the oven here. So this is the oven. The there is currently on, so it's moving very slowly. You can kind of see that. And then my powder bin, this is the powder that gets applied to the film uh, when I run my, my uh, print. So, I'm get the powder ready. So at this stage of the game, I typically have on my step manual and step auto. Normally I'm just going to use, once I get the film rolling on this length of film, I'm not going to use the step manual. So step manual on auto is actually controlling the conveyor belt. So if I turn off manual and auto, you can see that the conveyor belt's not turning or moving. And that's not ideal when you have the oven on. Because right now it's at 125 degrees Celsius. So if I turn on step manual, conveyor belt starts moving again. Step auto turns on, you know, so there's a little laser beam down there, right there. It sees the film and that tells it to move forward when there's film in view. But if film disappears out of the view, then it turns off step auto. So that's how that works. So at this stage of my process, um, I am ready to print this um, uh, document. So because I had a good um, head uh, nozzle check came out nice. Um, print, um, if you look down here, it's kind of hard to see. My film is on the tray where it needs to be to get ready to uh, print. So I've got a good powder loop. Um, my document's ready to print. 
So at this point, inside of the application, print XP or EXP, um, I just click print. And at this point, we're off to the races. So it's going to start printing. You have to really kind of monitor this. It's not just something you just press the button and walk away from. So um, you can see it says print is ready. It's going to get going back and forth here. Print is printing. I have this excess amount of film as a leader because I need that to apply my powder loop. So right now we got the print going. You can see it's laying down the, the graphic and, and then it's also laying down the white ink as well as the underbase. So the underbase is the white ink that's covering the graphic that ultimately is going to accept the powder from the powder shaker that the powder is going to stick to that white ink and then we're going to cure that inside of the printer and that's what's um, used to reactivate when you use your heat press to um, press that to any garment whether it's t-shirts, sweatshirts, tote bags, hats. So um, you can see it's coming down into the shaker here. I'm going to watch this because I have a problem because of my humidity right now is relatively low. So with low humidity, you're gonna have uh, static electricity. And with that static electricity, your film may bind up on your um, tray, your intake tray. If it binds up and starts backing up in to the printer, you'll get a bulge right here. It won't go anywhere because these metal tabs keep the film held down, but it'll still bulge up here on the side. And then this head will start scraping your ink you know, as it goes back and forth. So we definitely don't want to do that. So as this kind of gets going into the shaker, I keep an eye on it and monitor it here on the side to see if it's coming through yet. Because at one point, I'm just going to grab it and hold the film as it comes through. Um, I may have to pause this uh, printer a couple of times while I'm trying to film this by myself, um, just because of the nature of uh, the, the process. So you can see the thumbs is barely starting to peek out right now. That's moving down right now, so it, that's fine. Uh, on the screen, you can see Print XP showing me how much of the print is done, you know, compared to the total print that needs to be completed. So you can also see the printer says we're about 20% complete. So we're just gonna let this roll. So we're getting ready to drop down into the bin, which is fine. This is a good sign. Sometimes it'll start binding up there because of the static electricity. And again, it backs the film up, a little bit of a bulge, and then you start scraping the ink on your print, and at that point, you've ruined your print. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this come down a little bit further. I'm gonna pause the printer right now. So if I hit pause right here, eh, maybe not. Let's see if we're pouring it in. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause my printer by pressing pause. When you pause it, the front ends will go back to its normal location. So um, what I want to do is reach inside um, the bin here and grab this film and see if I can get it at least to where I can attach it to this with a, um, a magnet. So I'm going to lay my camera down for just a minute so I can get this laid down with a, a magnet. So hold on one second. So my magnet now is placed on the film on this um, control bar, um, right where the powder clear system is that clears the powder off the print. So um, again, the film's going underneath, and it's coming back up into the printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on um, resume. Once my print starts to resume, it's gonna start going I, I need a good loop in my shaker so that loop is going to go down um, quite a ways i let it go all the way to the bottom um, before i actually put it up here on the conveyor belt because um, i have to start applying powder to it so at this stage of the game when it's doing this i'll press the button over here that says powder manual when i do that you can see it lays down a little layer of powder 
on the film. And again, this is powder that's it's an, um, an adhesive. It's a glue uh, powder that um, is used on these prints that allow you to transfer this to another garment using a heat press. So I'll let that run for just a moment. I'll kind of tap my film to get my powder loop. So I can see the powder loop's a little bit bigger on this side than that side. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab my little spatula and I'll move some of the powder over and I'll give it a little tap because I want the powder to be you know, decently distributed across this piece of film. So one thing I noticed too is when I do this, I can see this edge is up high while that edge is down a little bit lower. So I'll, for me, I'll tweak this with my hand a little bit over here with the shaker. I'll pull it up a little bit and it kind of evens out the sides because I want it to stay even across the film as I'm doing this. So then I'll go ahead and do powder manual again, drop some more powder in here. I want kind of a heavy powder loop. You don't want the powder loop too heavy though that it causes a problem with your vacuum on your conveyor belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake it a little bit. So our first graphic is just about ready to get into that powder. Always keeping an eye on your print up here to make sure you're not cutting into your ink that we're getting into the, the graphic there at the bottom now which is what we want so that powder is going to saturate the white ink that's on the back of this film uh, that's over the top of the actual graphic and again that's used for um, transferring these images onto garments so looking at our, our print process here we're almost uh, we're at about 49%, so we're about halfway done. So we can see this is going on here. So I'm gonna let this go. You can see the little laser beam down there is now seen. And so that's the, that's the uh, step auto. It allows you to, if, if the film gets out of that laser beam, the conveyor belt will stop until there's enough film down below for it to proceed again. So I'm gonna let this run. You can see we're reaching the bottom of the tray there, which is good. I'm going to drop a little more powder down in it. All right, so at this stage of the game, we're, we're really at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this print. Or not, I'm going to cancel it. Or not cancel it. I'm going to pause it. Because it's starting to, you know, you can see it's bowing up on this side. We don't want it to obviously touch, you know, the, the other part of the print. So at this stage of the game, I'm going to disconnect my magnet and I'm going to take this film and I'm going to pull it up onto the conveyor belt. I'm going to turn on the vacuum. There's a vacuum in here that's going to hold that film down against this conveyor belt. Now once I do that, I turn on the powder clear button. So there's a button here that says powder clear. When I do that, those paddles back there behind the film will start spinning and they hit the film. What they do is they knock off the excess powder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to have to set the camera down for a minute while we get that process going, but then I'll come back. So let's see if I can set this on a tripod. Okay, so now you can kind of see the magnet still here. At this stage of the game, I'm going to go ahead and hit resume on the print but I'm going to take off this magnet I'm going to bring this up onto the conveyor belt or close to it you can see that there I turn on my powder clear and I turn on the vacuum so it's going to be kind of loud so hopefully you can still hear me I don't let the film go in at this stage of the game because we're not all the way down at the bottom yet. So I'll kind of keep it from going in. I just kind of hold it here on the conveyor belt while it's still going down under the, the powder um, loop below. It's at this stage of the game too that I turn on, there's a button over here that says powder auto. So I turn on powder auto. And that'll start powdering the film automatically every 
few seconds to see it go right there. So and then the laser's going. So at this stage I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the step manual. So you can see that the conveyor belt is moving, but it's only going to move when that laser beam is in contact with the film. So if one gets faster than the other, and a laser beam gets broken, this conveyor belt will stop moving. So I'm going to drop a little more powder down here with a powder manual. still on. So, and again, this film is vibrating like this because there's paddles behind it that are knocking the uh, excess powder off of the, the ink. So this ink is now got powder on it as it's getting ready to go into the oven. So if we come back up here, we can see we're about three quarters of the way down with the print, 72%. Printer still going. I haven't had any head strikes, which is good. Now it just roll. Again, if this conveyor belt picks up the film too fast, faster than what the printer is printing, and this film comes up beyond that little laser beam down there, this conveyor belt will stop. And that allows the film to come back in uh, from the printer. And when it, when it uh, breaks that laser beam, then this conveyor belt starts to go. We got a good, uh, good powder leak down there. So the powder is a glue, which is adhered to the white ink. So right here we have just the ink on the print. And then as it goes through the powder loop, it puts the glue powder on it. And then once it goes through the oven, it cures the, uh, the powder for that thumb. So I'm gonna stay here with my for just for a moment. One thing I normally do at this stage of the game is I'll move my chair out of the way and I'll move my desk because it's on wheels kind of out of the way because I need to be able to get the film down here to this intake tip. So intake tip. And we still got good, uh, good movement here on the printer. Good movement on the powder tray. Good movement on the conveyor box. Looking at the print, we're 86% uh, complete. So you can see the smoke that's coming off of the, uh, the, the oven right now. So normally what I would do at this stage of the game, because I've done it prior and I forgot. So this is the air purifier. So we'll turn this guy on. And what that does is it pulls the smoke uh, off of the oven and the exhaust it away from where we're working. Center's still going good. Outer loop is still looking good. We're at 94% uh, of our print. I like the height here between the film and the, the tray and the height over there is good. If you have it like off, if something's not right, if your speed going into your oven, one side might be higher or lower than the other, that can cause problems. So make sure you got a good height on this on both sides. I'm gonna make sure so now right, that line's gonna get broken, the laser, so when it happens, the so that the conveyor stops because that laser beam is broken. So we're done with the print. So at this stage of the game, I need to manually move this using the down button. So I'll press down on it. And this will bring the film down. So you can see the laser. At this point, I turn off step auto. Because you know, it's not going to run automatically because I have to manually feed the film into the printer as it stays the game. So because this is only a single game sheet, 22 by 108, 
Um, I'm going to kind of baby it through the system. I probably have about a six foot uh, trail on it. And then um, that allow me to hold on to it as I move it down into the, the shaker bin to, to finish it. So a lot of the times right now I just use my ear listening to the, the powder clear, the paddles hitting the back of the film. And I can tell by the sound of it that it's okay right now. But as this film starts to come up, because this is a moving, this will, the audio of this will change where it's not hitting it as aggressively. So at that point, I have to press the down button to make sure I'm getting enough film down in there so this system is hitting the back of the film. Because we want to make sure that we're getting more of that ink off the back of that film. It's getting a little bit quiet. So I'm going to go ahead and press down on the down button. a little bit noisier because it's now hitting the back of the thumb a little bit better. And, and then typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in to where it's like just out of view, put a magnet on it, I'm going to cut the film, and then I'm going to hand feed it the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. So at this stage of the game, then we want to start bringing this up on the take-up reel so we can see the film is already coming out the other side here. So I take one of my pieces of tape here, my heat tape, for the film that's coming out of the heater through the um, dryer cooling system and it's going to roll up on my take-up wheel. Coming back over here again. You can tell by the sound of this, it's not sounding too good, so I'm going to bring this down. I'm probably okay to cut it off. So I take one of my magnets, put it on the tray, and I go ahead and cut the film at this point. I'm going to pull my magnet so I can hold this by hand. So this is all by hand now. So I'm going to start feeding this down here manually to make sure that all of the ink is covered with the, uh, the powder and the powder food. So at this stage I'm going to turn off powder auto. I reach inside and grab the film from this side. So now I got my hand on it over here. And then I, I can bring it down and I see that the, the powder is, you know, it's, it's covered the entire amount of the film. So I just want to make sure everything's got powder on it. At this point, I just let this film kind of go down. And I can close up this cover. So that film's gonna go through, but now I've got a good um, amount of powder on the entire print itself. So at this point, I'll go ahead and reel in my film on my printer to get ready for my next print. At some point, I'm gonna turn off the powder clear uh, because it's no longer necessary because the film's no longer uh, being hit. 
uh, but I want to make sure all the powder is off the stone before it goes through the uh, oven. So I can see the foam still moving its way through down below. You might not be able to see it here on the stone, but I can see it down there. So right about there is where it's kind of knocking off all the excess powder. And then I can tell by the sound of the shaker um, that it's that it's been uh, that it's done. Um, sometimes we're off a little bit on the conveyor belt. So you can see that side over there is got more than over here. So sometimes, depending on the take-up reel, um, we can turn off the vacuum. So if I turn off vacuum, turn off powder, I'll turn off vacuum, and then I'll actually take and try to reposition the film and then bring the vacuum back on. And that kind of re. Situates kind of hard with my little desk here, though. But um, when I do that, it brings up this. So I can kind of tweak it a little bit. We're a little bit off, um, which isn't the end of the world. This take up will be fine. I mean, you look at the film, and it's not 100% uh, online, but that's okay because we have to take it off that take up reel. Um, you see all that smoke coming out. We we have to take it off that take up reel to actually cut off the leader and the the, the tail that we use to, to um, get this through the oven. At a certain stage, you're gonna get to a point where there's not enough film inside the oven to actually have it hold to the conveyor belt. So there's a vacuum that's sucking this film down to this conveyor belt. There's little slots inside this metal channel. So at some point, you can see we still got some film here. This is the end of it here. So this is my tail. Normally I don't have this much of a tail. Normally I have about six inches, but um, because I'm filming this, this is what um, what happened. So um, close that up. So what will happen is eventually this is going to get to here at the end, and as the vacuum is sucking the film down, and it gets less and less surface area on the film, this, because they're, the take-up reel has tension and it's trying to roll up this film, it starts pulling it off the, uh, the conveyor belt. So I have to kind of hold my hand on the film, I'll turn off the oven, I'll turn off the vacuum, and then I'll kind of manually take this down into the take-up reel until it's done. So, that process is fairly straightforward. I'm gonna fast forward through this a little bit, and then uh, once we get to the end, I'll show you what we actually do. So this is the end of the film coming out here. I can tell because the, there's not another set of images coming up on the top of it. So at this stage of the game, I kind of hold on to it because I know the film's gonna get short. You can't really see the spots. There's little spots in there the vacuum there that kind of hold it from slipping. So I'm gonna let this kind of roll for a little bit. And then what we'll do is, um, right now I can turn the oven on. Because there's nothing in the oven. It's curing. But as it starts to slip, because there's not enough film on the conveyor belt, for the vacuum, I'll turn the vacuum off. Um, let's see when that starts happening here. relatively close. Normally I don't have as much of a tail. Um, I did that just because I was trying to film this at the same time. Um, I try to minimize waste because a leader and a tail is waste film is just going to get cut off and run away. So I'll just pull it down. It's starting, to, it's starting to slip right now because of the vacuum. So I'll turn the vacuum off. So with the vacuum off, you can see it just starts to slip off the conveyor belt. So it's already kind of past the, um, the fans that dry the ink. So at this stage of the game, I'll just hold it by hand, kind of let it go. And then it'll, it'll wrap up on the take-up wheel. 
I'll come over here. At this stage of the game, I'll hold on to the film and then I'll turn off the uh, take up reel. And so that's off now. So uh, this is fairly simple to get off. Let's see if I can adjust this a little bit. Move this over here. So we're just going to move this over and just knock this off. So that side is off um, from the intake. So this side is going to wiggle it a little bit and then that comes off. So now I'll come over to our table. I'll lay the film down. Kind of get it set up where it's right at the edge. And then roll this out. This will probably be more than this table. It is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move. That would stop moving. I think it's not going to. So I'm going to roll that up a little bit. Behave yourself. So I'm going to take this and bring it down a smidge. It'll, it'll hang over a little bit. Which is fine. And then I'll reel out the rest of it over here. There we go. So you can see the intake wheels off. And we set that down over here. So once this is done at this stage for me, um, I turn off, um, I've already done it. You want to make sure um, your oven dry is off and your vacuum is off because those aren't really doing anything. I've turned off my powders, obviously. Step manual and step auto, you can leave those on because they it's not going to hurt anything. Um, and then what I do is I turn off the uh, air purifier because this thing's just making noise at this stage of the game. So that, that quiet, quiets it down pretty good. So at this stage, um, what we do is um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this at the wedding strip um, across and then uh, at the end where we have the, uh, the tail end, I'll cut off that excess. We'll roll it up. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole video process of that, but once we have that, we roll it up. We put it into either a uh, 25 by 2 by 2 cardboard box or a 25 by 3 by 3 cardboard tube. Um, we include on the print, um, these are our um, press instructions. So this will be inside uh, the print with the print itself. Uh, we include a packing slip. Uh, we tape it up really good. We put some stickers on it for our company. Uh, print the shipping label and out the door it goes. So that's my soup to nuts beginning to end process of what I'm doing uh, to print a DTF transfer for a customer. Now again, if we have multiple orders in a day, you know, transfers, they'll just, we'll print the whole sheet and then we'll cut it off, you know, obviously where the customers are, and we'll roll it up and ship uh, per customer. But um, this today was just a single gang sheet uh, print, so you could see that process. So again, I hope this was uh, educational for you. Uh, that it helped you see how I do this. Maybe you do it a little bit differently uh, in your business. I don't know how you handle your leaders, your tails, your powders. You know, everyone's got their processes. So um, I wanted to show you what I do, um, and hopefully it's helpful. So if you do something different, if you have the time, please put something together. Put a little video together for us and post it uh, in our group or on Facebook or YouTube, uh, and let us see. Well, because sometimes, you know, I'm always looking for ways to, you know, make things more efficient in the way that I'm doing it. Maybe I'm doing something that you're doing it more efficiently, and I'd love to know. So, if you like my video, please uh, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.